this is Tracy Una Wagner with Versatile Inspirations, and today we're going to be talking about the spring equinox, Ostera, and Persephone, and how we can take the balance of the season and bring it within. So let me start the screen share and we'll get started. Wonderful. All right. So what is the spring equinox? The spring equinox is when night and day are almost equal all around the world. During the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere experiences their fall or autumnal equinox. In Wicca, it is Mabon. So though the same night and day occurrence it's the same. So we experience the exact same thing. It may be reversed, but because it's balanced or semi-balanced, then we're experiencing the same kind of um, night and day balance, both here in the Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere. Many cultures celebrate these traditions, rituals, and festivals that welcome in the spring equinox. From ancient to modern times, the equinoxes mark a time of either sowing to create abundance or reaping the rewards of a bountiful year. Spring is considered a time of rebirth, new beginnings, and fresh starts. From the Mayans and Chichen Itzu, or from um, the Christian based Easter, it's been celebrated and continues to be celebrated in the most wonderful ways. Ostara and Persephone. So, what do they have to do with the spring equinox? Well, Ostara is an ancient Celtic and it's Saxon belief. Ostara is the Anglo Saxon goddess of dawn. So in Wicca, the things that actually um, represent Osara are eggs, rabbits, flowers, and seeds, and they all equal fertility. So it's almost like with spring, you're bringing in the, the new plants, the fresh starts, the new beginnings, and those actually equal the fertility that of nature even of us ourselves by where we are at the time during this magical time of year. Now Persephone is Greek mythology. She is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. She is the queen of the underworld alongside Hades, who is the god of the underworld. Now her story goes that um, because she was the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, Hades actually kidnapped her, took her. <laughs> down to the underworld to be with him. Zeus and Demeter were upset about this. Demeter was so upset that she made the land barren. Zeus tried to correct this and to bring Persephone back, but Hades had already had her eat of the pomegranate, the pomegranate seeds, which kept her tied to him. It, they worked it out to where Persephone would come back to Earth for three quarters of the year and then stay in the underworld for one quarter of the year. And the time when Persephone comes back to Earth is the time when, spring, when the spring equinox is, when the plants come back to life and the newness and freshness and rebirth of the season begins. And so she's tied to the spring equinox or Ostera. Now ways in which we can balance, use that balance that is brought back or start afresh or to renew, begin again, or have a fresh start. And even just with that balance, find that balance within ourselves. There are many different ways we can do during this do during this time to actually feel that that balance and that equilibrium so that we can move forward and have our own fresh starts. 
one of the ways we can do that is just by being in the magic of nature. Now, the magic of nature, you can see uh, very directly the result of the spring equinox. Um, some of us turn our clocks, spring forward our clocks, we move forward, and that light of day actually starts earlier. So we get the light of day and we're able to maybe feel a little bit fresher in the morning because we have that light. We're not getting up in the dark. And that magic of nature, just seeing the crocuses come through or seeing the buds on the cherry trees, just it's a wonderful time. And it's so magical to see everything start anew and afresh. So just by being in nature helps to balance our ourselves. We can plant seeds. Now, March is a little soon to be planting outside some things, but we can plant seeds inside. I'm actually planting some uh, grass seed for the cats and some catnip, and I'm going to start those inside. And just seeing those little sprouts come through the soil is such a magical thing. Just being able to see that it's a fresh start. It's newness. It's rebirth. And so it's just a beautiful way of balancing our own emotions, balancing ourselves, and realizing that we can start anew as well. Buying flowers. Flowers are uplifting. Flowers create a sense of just, you know, awe. It, the magic of nature and flowers. Flowers are amazing. They're beautiful and they just uplift your spirits and raise your energy quite literally just by being in the same area of them. They're, it's a wonderful way to balance your own being here on earth and by allowing that freshness and that revitalization that the flowers bring when you bring them inside, buy them fresh or cut. I prefer fresh <laughs> on the actual plant to cut flowers. I'm not a big cut flower fan, but um, I love the plants and having the plants produce those beautiful flowers. It's just a magical, beautiful thing. Also, we can wake up early. Because the sun comes out earlier, we can wake up earlier and we can feel that vibrancy that is in the air. You can actually hear the birds. The birds are out chirping and things are moving. People are out driving and just walking about earlier. And it's amazing. The energy just raises, the vibration raises. And so it's just a wonderful thing. Even if you just wake up five or 10 minutes early, you're able to experience that that fertility that that brings that brings a newness and freshness to your life to being able to get more done so it plants those seeds of sowing you can sow more and then reap the rewards later on by just that five or ten minutes extra use it in a productive way and you've got a lot more done so it just, it's amazing that that time of waking up early because we're able to maybe coincide with the um, nature a little bit more with the sun coming up a little bit earlier and going down a little bit later. So we're able to have a little bit more time through the day and it just brings a new vibrancy to your day. Coloring eggs, the fertility part. Coloring eggs it looks like it's in a lot of different traditions, including Easter, which is coming up. And so that fertility of coloring the eggs, we're able to balance those, the, the fertility with abundance, and then we're able to sow that. And when we're thinking of during the time that we're coloring eggs, it's a kind of a quieter time. You're doing something. And when you're coloring those eggs, think about the words that correspond with abundance, what you think of abundance and fertility. Just think of um, things that you would like more abundance in, gratitude or thanksgiving or gosh, more abundance in health, more abundance in time with family, more abundance in maybe monetized like um, money forms or any other thing that abundance 
um, means to you. Think of those things during the time that you're coloring the eggs and just kind of infuse those with that. And because it's been a long time since we have had this tradition, it's grounded in that. It's grounded in the idea of fertility. So you're able to bring about that abundance even more. Thank the ancestors and those in spirit. We can have rituals. We can have a little um, altar that we're able to celebrate or welcome in our ancestors or those in spirit, whether it's back in the time of, oh my gosh, the Celtic or the Saxons, the Celts or the Saxons, and you know, Maybe we have ancestors back in that time frame, or we have ancestors back in that we know of that were Wiccan or that were pagan, or maybe we just know that our spirit or those that are in spirit now are family members or our friends were maybe Christian, or maybe they celebrated the spring equinox, or maybe they celebrated Easter, and you remember those times. These are things that we can thank and have revere for, that we can just open our minds and our hearts to, <clears throat> allowing them to come and be with us during this time of fertility, of welcoming in the dawn, of rebirth. And with that, we're just able to thank them. Even though they're still in spirit, they still hear you. And we're able to thank them and just welcome them into our lives for the rest of the year. All right. Well, thank you for so much for spending some time with me today. I so appreciate it. And as always, I'm sending you and yours love, light, and eternal blessings. Take care.